you are meeting Ghana Institute of Infoiders and all the faith fraternity. This alone, you are talking to about 500 companies. What that means is that you are talking to not less than 1,200 companies, bringing all the other uh, sister associations together. What it means is that whatever discussion we have here today will be something that is dear to the heart of the people and we can trust you, you will get what we want you to get so that we get what we want. On that note, on that note I welcome you to Ghana Institute of Trade Forwarders Conference Hall. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we now call upon the regional chairman of the NDC in the Greater Accra region to also give us a remark. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. For me, I'm a party man. And when they started into the introduction, I could hear some members of all the associations chanting the slogan of the NDC. I am representing the party within the region and I'm trying as much as possible to convince people to assist us to go to the target of the 750,000 votes toward the region. I can't do that without saying my slogan here. I know most of you, you'll be shy of responding to it. I can see my clearing agent, who is uh, a branch secretary of one of the constituencies. So definitely, I, can see, I, I will see that as soon as I say NDC, he will say a hey, job or all. So you convince all the men and women along your line to make sure that uh, when I say ADC, you say age hey, or hey, oh, oh. Then when I said Jomama, then I'll see what you say. That one, I'll let you create the slogan here for us to send it to your members out there. Ayezu. Uncle Charles, I didn't hear from you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We are hard time press, and um, I could feel the heat in the room. So do you guys. We are not here with the entourage, in the entourage of the Excellency to come and campaign. His Excellency with the NDC has taken time to go around the length and the breadth of the nation to hear from the people, the associations, the unions, so that our sisters to do better input into our NDC manifesto. Yesterday we had the opportunity to meet the Greater Accra House of Chiefs. And this morning, for them to pour collaboration and give us the permission to enter onto their land, and was successfully done. This morning, we've also met the clergy to also pray for us. Because we all know, when you go to the church for liberation, you definitely have to come to the clergy for them to pray for us. They've told us and promised us that all of them will do a 274 days fasting for us. And he knows that at the end of the fasting, his Excellency John Damani Mama will be sworn in come 7th January 2025. Anyone here who believes this, let me hear Amen. God. Uncle Sam, now I heard your Amen. On that note, we find such association as one of the very important associations. The engine of growth cannot ride successfully or smoothly without the informal sector. So today we came here to listen to you. We know the problems. For me, since we started this tour, 
I always have the bill of leading. Mr. Chase, free forwarder. He was the one who gave it to me. He's the one who has been clearing my containers for me. Yesterday, last week, the one who cleared, this is it. So that I know, I've had meetings with some of you here. His Excellency will address it. This is mine. My problem is that although there's no more COVID, but I'm paying COVID tax. My problem is that I am paying what we call the network charges. So that means that after paying the duty, the data you use, I pay for it too. So it's essentially to do the needful to this one. But on that note, we thank you very much for coming to listen to us. The 24-hour economy, you are the drivers. I am an importer. We are the drivers. That means that we are going to work from 6 to 2, 2 to 6, 6 to another morning. So today we are here to solicit for your information and input for us to make sure that we we'll make a 24 hour economy. Thank you very much, Regional Chairman. Once again, let's give him a round of applause. Now, as indicated by the Regional Chairman, the purpose of this program is to give the industry players the opportunity to come out with the things that they believe when taken on board, when reach the manifesto of His Excellency and the NDC as a political party. We are aware the good people of this country are looking up to His Excellency John Dramani Mahama to lead the country. And that is the reason why he is here. So that at the end of the day, whatever comes out will be taken on board. So this is, there is, going to, this is going to be an open session. You should be free. Nobody should be intimidated. Come out, pour out your frustrations. What you believe will help the end industry. You have the former Minister for Transport also here. I've been told that any language of your choice is welcome. We have people from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. We are all here. So let's feel free, come out with the issues, and then everything will be taken on board. So without wasting much time, um, President, any guide, are you going to lead the onslaught? Thank you very, very much. Let's welcome uh, Mr. Jokache to lead the charge. Good afternoon, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished members of the Port and Marine Centre. Today, we are honoured to welcome His Excellency, former President John Dramani Mahama, the flag bearer of the NDC, into our midst. His presence underscores the importance of this subsector to Ghana's growth and development. During his tenure, President Mahama exhibited a strong commitment to our nation's progress. His leadership and dedication have left a lasting impact on this nation. As we gather here today, let us address some key demands that, if met, can significantly enhance the efficiency and growth of the port, the subsector, and the nation, and the landlocked countries where we give service to them. Priority to priority for indigenous clearing and forwarding. We propose giving effect 
to indigenous Ghanaians. Indigenous Ghanaians. I mention it again. For the customs clearance, not for foreigners or shipping lines who carry containers here and retake it and clear. The, uh, it's been enshrined in the customs act already, 2015 at 891. Specifically, section 43, which was carefully crafted under your watch, but unfortunately degraded. So, this is something which should be on your table. You look at it every morning. You go to that table to look to work. Revamping. Shipping line administrative charges. Majority of you people are also businessmen. And I am aware when you bring one container, it should be charged on a bill of lading, not on the units of containers on the bill of ladies, which is killing business in this spot. As I speak to you, Togo is taking has taken off all those charges and our landlord countries that gives us revenue through the port are going there and we are losing those revenues and it's a whole chain that we are working with so why do we lose the business to togo and Cote d'Ivoire when we have the mandate i want to tell you authority that the french countries though we speak english love to work with us but our doing of things in this spot has made them find another level in togo and Cote d'Ivoire. so my excellency this is one point again you have to make sure the business comes back to us as we sit here the number of people here my colleague mentioned over a thousand plus companies and these thousand plus companies I can tell you they are feeding over 20,000 people. So if business is taken away, where are we going to get the people to work and live on? So you need those people to come into your line with you and make sure you hit a seat. <laughs> Abolishing VAT and transit charges, on transit charges. The transitors come here and I am aware all these countries have signed international treaties for free flow of cargo through our ports because they are landlocked countries. Why are we taking them VAT? To pay to who? Where would they take their returns from? It is wrong. And the thing is wrong. It is wrong. We shouldn't be taking those VAT charges. And we are still paying those charges. Why should it be so? No. We need a stop to that. So, Mr. My Excellency, this is also should be lying on your table every morning. You look at it when you get a seat. Now, another point which is very dear to all businessmen here: implementing a fixed exchange rate, quarterly, biannually, or annually. In Togo. The, the cost of beer has been remade for the same price for about two years. But Ghana, <laughs> those my friends who take the beer, change the beer. <laughs> prices of beer changes every other week. Every other week, prices of beer are changing. This is how low, and the cake prices remain almost the same. But we want the exchange rate for duty purposes. I'm emphasizing on that. Duty purposes should be either quarterly, by annually, or annually, so that we can all plan to see how business can run. So today that products of goods will not be changing every other month. It is, it is unbearing on us. And I hope that will be looked at very, very, very well. Reassessing interest charges on imports. Fair assessment of interest charges. On import is necessary to maintain a balanced trade environment. A layman will say, did government borrow any importer money to go to trade? No. But he brings his cargo, he's looking around to find money to pay his taxes. The only thing he realizes after four days, he has to pay interest charge on the tax he's going to pay to government to run the country. 
Is it fair? Is it fair, members? So, my Excellency, those are pressing issues which we want you to address when you get a note. Um, shipping lines have taken undue advantage of, of Ghana, of Ghana, Ghanaian businessmen. Uh, it's rather unfortunate that most leadership are passed through. They cannot take a strong stand and tell them, look, it's by law. Every, uh, if I do an export from here to maybe India, I pay all charges to them. Here in Ghana. When the cargo gets to a uh, port of uh, discharge, what the person has to do is only to tender his bill of lading for a release. And that release should be only on an administrative charge and know the demorage areas. We work Monday to Friday, but we are being charged demorage on Sunday, Saturday, and holidays. Why should it be so? We are not ready. If uh, some of us, we don't want to say what we did in the past, but if these things don't happen, we ourselves will lead a revolt for it to stop. Because how, if you don't work and you will be in charge, demorage on s holidays, Sunday and Saturdays, it is wrong. So, but I hope the 24 hour message is going to roll that thing up. Yeah. So, we believe, as freight forwarders in this country, addressing these concerns will pave the way for Ghana's prosperity and growth. May God bless you, my Excellency. May God bless you, beloved nation, Ghana. Long live Gif, long live Achak, long live Fak. Long live Cuba, long live Ghana. Thank you. A round of applause. <laughs> per the program, Association of Customs House, are you also ready to present something new? Okay, let's invite him to the podium. That's Mr. Siribo, right? Yeah. Mr. Siribo Boatin. I'm being told atomic bomb. I can't say a zoo because I'm an MPP person. A zoo? Uh, Mr. President. Uh, I'm calling Mr. President because uh, it's likely you will come to power. I have one issue that bothers me on this uh, industry. We collect all the money for the government, but we are only treated as thieves, and that is a problem. It's, it's, it's sad. We don't even have an airline that regulates us. As I stand here, I don't know whether we are regulated, regulated by Minister of Trade transport or finance. Sir, can we do a contract between us and your good self that when you come to power, you're going to give us an airline that will govern our trade. That says that the freight for the industry is being governed by A, B, C, D. We don't have that. The only law we have is Customs Act. It gets a, a straight line, one line that governs us. One day a commissioner will come that will take that thing off and we are off. Mr. President, if, if it's okay by you, since we have about three lawyers with you, let's draft something. Let's do a contract between freight forwarders and yourself. When? I'm not saying if. When you come to power. Please. I want your word on this. You see, some of us will be going on pension very soon. Our children must come and take over this work. So we don't want money for our pockets. We are thinking about the future. We are generational leaders. So please, I want us my boss is here, that, that four presidents will sit with you. Let's do an LA contract between yourself and us. That 
when you come to power, we are going to give you an airline. You are not going to be under anybody so that nobody wakes up in the morning and takes us off. Thank you very much. God bless you. Let's give Mr. Sribo a round of applause. He's done so well. Now, uh, Mr. Samson Asagi, Awungobi, Importers and Exporters Association of Ghana. Oh, failed presidential candidate <laughs> in 2020. Thank you. Thank you. Your Excellency, the former President of the Republic of Ghana, and then a flag bearer and leader of the Nasa Democratic Congress. Under the existing protocol, I think I welcome you to the Port of Tema. I'm happy that before, or for the first time, a political party do not just come and throw their manifesto onto we the trading, trading public, but to say there's a need before I come out with my policy, I want to listen from the horse's own mouth, then you can formulate policy. And I'm quite extremely happy that by the time <laughs> that policy will come, will be given birth, that is why we talk about proper participation. We, the key stakeholder, has participated and it gave birth to the document that if, when you become, not if, as my brother said, when you become the president, we can use that to hold your government accountable. And at the end of the day, what I'm going to say here, when the manifesto is out, we want to sign a social contract with you. So that based on that, when you become the president, we can always take your attorney general to court. If you said you would do this for us, you have come, you haven't done it. We'll be, we'll be, we, we, we will be requesting timelines, specific timelines. If you say when you come, you will do this for us. Is it your first budget? Is it your second budget? Is it your quarterly media budget? Is it your second year in government? Is it your third year in government? Is it your fourth year in government? Specific roles for us to know so that we can hold you accountable. Said when you come, first time, this is what you are going to do for us. <laughs> My very good senior, the gift president has spoken length about some of the things. But permit me on the lighter note, your regional chairman is an illegal importer. He hasn't registered with the importer and export association. He hasn't been paying subscription fee. <laughs> But I'm happy that he was the first person to be, to be shouting with his DOE. And that is how terrible it is. If you come to our port, Your Excellency, that is how terrible we pay fees and charges. Most of, apart from the duty component that we pay to the state, that goes to the consolidated account, the agencies, Ministries, departments, and agencies working in the port is too numerous. And under the ICOM system, many of these can stay in their offices. Some of them are just to approve. And I'm happy Ray is here. I'm happy Honorable Fifi is here. I'm happy my sister uh, 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 Joyce Mutare Bawa is here. They understand what I'm talking about. These are institutions that are just to give certificate or approval as soon as an agent passes the DOE into the computer. It will form prompt on your desktop. Yet they are all in the port here, causing delays for all of us. Again, MPS, MPS, it was another term that that contract was signed. And I'm happy Ray is here. They, are, they were not supposed to do divining. They were not supposed to do divining. MPS has taken out the vulnerability of that contract. Any container should go to their platform just because they want to take money from us. And Ray is the mastermind of that law. He understands what he signed. They were not supposed to do it. Yet because government has changed, they said they are supposed to do it. And they are doing it. 
When containers arrive at MPS, these containers that are supposed to go like our river dedicated terminal here, the Golden Jubilee where the Abosoka people go there to remove, uh, clear their spare parts or to clear their Bronuwawu, the dangerous containers that are supposed to go to TBT because of how flammable it is, MPA would deliberately keep the, the containers stuck there for days just because they want to collect uh, uh, revenue when they are not supposed to do that. Mr. President, I want if you come, these containers from the, if the vessel bed, when they discharge it from the, from the key to the truck, it should just go out to the outside ICDs. They are not supposed to be staffed within the MPS for this. When you ask this person, is this? When you ask, we do, it is Nyama. Nyama. Just because someone wants to make money from the vulnerable people. Mr. President, look at this for us. Mr. President, when you come, I am a maritime. I want, I want to have the president's attention, please. Mr. President, I want your attention. I don't know whether when you were in government, if you have ever been to the dry dock. I don't know if you have ever been to the dry dock when you were president. Or when Fifi Kwete was the minister of transport, if he has ever been to the dry dock. If you go to dry dock, I am a maritime train. I, I did my master's at Rukina Maritime University. It is pathetic. That, that facility can give us more dollars to turn around our economy. So I told the four economic, please think about dry dock seriously. Dry dock is dead. Since the inception of crime and criminal time that they put up that infrastructure, the crane, the tether ton crane and the 40 ton crane, and the, the area that we, we do the uh, repairs of, of the vessels. Look, small if a vessel caught to our port, and the Ghana Maritime Authority go on port state control inspections. Even if there's a sewer, uh, leakages, the next port they can go is Nigeria. They can't come to our... our, our. Meanwhile, our dry dock is... We have the, the best facilities than other places. But because it's outmoded. If you come, I need you to get a better investor to come and take over that facility. Remo, understand what I'm talking about. Mr. President, if you go to... I don't know if... I'm sure you heard of... Regional Maritime University. That's where I did my masters. Our Regional Maritime University is made up of five countries, five state countries. As you speak, Mr. President, the top three or the top five or the top management at the Regional Maritime University are supposed to have a Ghanaian. Those of us who have gone to the Regional Maritime University to study, and those of us who understand maritime sector, like I do, will tell you that at the Regional Maritime, we have no single Ghanaian in management. As you speak, there's an acting rector who is, I think, from Cameroon or where? Sierra Leone. The rector is supposed to be a Ghanaian. We need a professor. And there are professors, when you go to Regina Maritime, Regina Maritime right now, we have Ghanaians who, hold, who are professors. Yet, as you speak, there's no Ghanaian in that top management. But we are paying money. We are, we are member states, and we are not benefiting. On the Marital Regional Marital University, Mr. President, we can train. Let your government, if your government come, put your ears there. We can train a lot of seafarers, nurses, caterers to that, that university, and export them to sea. And that could bring more much money. As a country, I don't think we understand the advantage or the opportunity we stand to enjoy from the regular maritime. Mr. President, when MPS came to being, our Steve Doring companies, they are here. Steve Doring companies, they have just, they have laid off their workers, they have, their business is collapsed, and Steve Doring should be sure right property of citizenry, Ghanaians. If you go to MPS, they said, we cannot open a port to any. But why, do you gapo, why is it Gapo giving last to poor people, more people, to register as Steve Dora when there's no job? Last but not the least, shipping agency. Shipping agency. My sister Bawa understand. Really understand what I'm talking about. In this country, 
MPS, and uh, not MEX line, MSC, PIL, call the super line. There is no any principal in this country. They are all agencies. They are wholly in trust for their principal. Yet, when you come, they, they, they take all the juicy. Now they are even doing clearing. They are doing clearing. They are competing with the agency here. The agency here are hungry. That is the fact of the matter. The agency here, to, to give them a proper adjective, it is their hollow. Because all the juicy jobs is being taken by these shipping lines, and the rest. Do you know if you go to Togo, you can be a free for like Education is an ever, he understands the language, or if you go to Togo, he can enter the airport and clear cargo. But here, a Chinese man is clear for Chinese companies. An Indian man is clear for Indian companies. Lebanese are clear for Lebanese companies. So, someone called for a law. When you do the law, also put in criminal that if a Ghanaian aid somebody to also to go and get a certificate to declare it, he will go to prison. Because when you ask, they will tell you they'll use our own Ghanaian certificate to open these companies. I want to appeal to you that my brother's Guta is not here. Food and beverage is not here. Trade advocacy Ghana attack is not here. Uh, I think AGI to our sisters and Chamber of Commerce. For the Ghana Super Authority, we want, as we speak, they are supposed to be regulating the shipping lines companies in this country. Yet the parent act, Mr. President, if you sit in the car, go on, and look at the parent act that was established, that established the Ghana Super Authority. It is hollow. They don't have teeth to bite. It was, I think, during your government. We brought LI2190. That's where they say they can, they can regulate. They are struggling. But in their parent act, they are doing what Asaka has been doing every day that you do here. Important as what I say, is this what they are doing for important? This is what they, we are to advocate. But we, they are now a government. They, are, they were under my brother, one of the ministries. They collect every BOE, they collect nine Ghana cities. Say they are doing advocate. When they come to government and importers, then they will be silent because their minister is sitting in cabinet and they take that decision. Now we are now fighting. Nothing, no person will come to our outsourcing to help us run or train ourselves or do, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, what, what, what do you call it? S train ourselves and co uh, encourage ourselves to retool ourselves and then work the more. When you come, at least every BOE, give us a pest. Something that at the end of the month, GRO would, would, would calculate it and share among we the various associations to support us around our offices too. Thank you very much. A round of applause. That's why I win so big. Once you give him the floor, he can take the whole day. Um, we call on the rep for Dry Dog Workers Union. Oh, okay. Then the Steve Doris. Are you also here? So come forward and then let's hear from you. Let's give him a round of applause. Please, when you come, just mention your name. Yes. Yes, good afternoon. Your Excellencies and all the colleagues of the port. Uh, my name is Mr. Kofi Webb. I'm the Managing Director of Agilent Maritime Services and the Vice President of the Steve Doe Association. And I believe we in the port are very frustrated now. I'm not going to give a lecture. I just have two questions. And the port to me is a nose of Ghana. When you clamp on the nose, the body is in trouble. And this port, when you clamp the nose, because the port is linked to so many parts of the economy, so many different, different sectors, and the mismanagement of the port means the economy is in trouble. So I want to ask Your Excellency, that when it comes to power, not if, when it comes to power,
what is he going to do to make the pot breathe again? Because we are not breathing now, we are suffering. That's my first question. My second question is Okay. Well, when, when, when Mr. President comes to power, I want him to first look at the tariff system. The first thing is to look at the tariff system. There are so many associations, and I'm not going to mention, that add up to the GPA, GPHA tariffs that we should look at so that the tariff is down. So Togo will not be taking the lion's share. Togo should not even be mentioned when it comes to Marines. With Ghana, Ivory Coast is taking lion's share. We have been, we the leaders who have the best ports, are now struggling to barely eat. And I want him to change, look at the tariff system. Not necessarily reduce the GPHA tariff. There are other tariffs that are added and GTHA is doing all the work and other monkey is working and baboon is what? So he should look at the tariff system and know how to streamline it well so that it can be reduced in a way that it will allow more imports and all, all the economies, that are the different sectors, businesses that are suffering can breathe again. The second thing I want to add is the Mr. President should look at how he can find in his busy schedule a way to talk or sit with stakeholders in our sector when he comes to power so that we will repair the port not just for one administration, four years or six years. It should be done so that posterity will judge him well. So my, my suggestion is as soon as he wins power, it shouldn't be this is the last meeting. I remember one time Mr. President went to Akosomu, there was a meeting where he met business people and all kinds of stakeholders. The outcome was beautiful. We all know what happened. The economy was in trouble, he was able to arrest the economy. So the second thing I want him to do is to, he should not ignore the poor stakeholders. It should be an ongoing dialogue. And so that the, because the port is if you manage the port well the city is able to be stable because currently the city is in trouble because a lot of port stakeholders bring in dollar we we don't take dollar out we bring in we earn dollars from the shipping lines and all this especially steve dorian and other sectors so if we we are denied work and the dollar is going to expatriate companies and they don't even bring their money here. They keep it there. The dollar doesn't come and the CD is in what? Trouble. So he should look at that situation with his, with his finance and economic team. How to make sure our companies are resourced to be able to keep the dollar in Ghana and not keep the dollar out. And then the last but not the least, I don't want to talk because so many organizations want to talk. The last but not the least is Mr. President should look at the sector in relation to how it affects the other sectors. For example, when a producer of uh, maybe a manufacturer of juice or some other commodity or something, you would think it's juice, but he's always importing something to be able to process the juice. So we should look at this 24-hour uh, economy, how he's going to resource the economy in relation to the other sectors and how it connects with the port. So that whilst he's giving, he said he would give incentives to some people for the 24-hour uh, thing. He should also look at how the port, 13 industries that it is on his heart to do, he can use the port to help them by reducing certain things and taking out things like COVID levy, so many unnecessary levies, and, and then reduce certain levies that Ghana has that 
other countries that we are competing with as a port do not have. This is killing the industry and it's making Ghana very not competitive at all. Thank you, sir, and have a nice day. Thank you so much. Please, a round of applause for him. He's raised very relevant issues. Um, Nana Fedua, is he around? Nana Fedua, please uh, come forward. He is the Association of Custom House Agents, Ghana. Custom Brokers Association of Ghana. Nana Fredua. You are welcome. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm not that tall. <laughs> okay. Uh, good afternoon. I mean, I stand on all existing protocols uh, and say, Mr. President, you are welcome to the port and your eminent team. I mean, we just want to urge you uh, to pay close attention to all the things that our earlier speakers have spoken about. Please would urge you to also look at the things we discussed when we had the opportunity the last time round to discuss the issues of the port. I mean, things haven't changed. If anything at all, it's gotten worse. So there's no need to go back on it. It sounds like a broken record. But the issues are the same. Uh, the issues of taxation, they are overburdening. You should look at them again. These are the things that were promised that they will be taken care of, that we are going to move away from taxation to production. Unfortunately, it hasn't worked the way we thought it would. So I would urge you to look at those things again. They are the same things that are burdening us. Uh, the ecosystem is not good. I would urge you to play, pay close attention to what the other people have said. I mean, things like uh, the authority that is supposed to regulate, I mean, our operations in this industry, the Ghana Shippers Authority, uh, LI 2190, several people have mentioned it. It's a weak law. I mean, the Shippers Authority, the parent law is about 30 years or something this year. I mean, it's out of place. Help them to promulgate a law that will rein all the actors in the port sector so that there will be some sort of supervisory authority. As it sits now, the shipping lines come in for mention most. They are running real. If uh, the port authority, which is Gapoa, levies anything, they mark up. What they haven't levied, they find ways to bring them onto their invoices. We've spoken, we've met, we've engaged, we've gone all the way to the transport ministry, which is supposed to, I mean, be the supervisory authority. I mean, it's just been a talk shop. Like I said, it's almost like a broken record. So please look at these things that we're strengthening the shippers' authority or bring some authority from the Jubilee House or wherever to, to, to look at the way things are going. I mean, there are too many issues for us to be able to, I mean, reiterate all of them again. I mean, Asaki and the rest have all hit on them. But we need an authority that has the power to rein these, I mean, uh, operators of the port in. Some of them have deep pockets. We've attempted to take them to court and things like that. But there are companies who are supposed to be saying they are doing end-to-end. -end. And for that matter, they are taking the business that is reserved for Ghanaians, indigents, in the name of uh, value chain control, end-to-end. -end. Shipping lines who are supposed to be carriers are now engaging, clearing, and things like that. We know the issues. We don't have to come and uh, uh, overflog them. Please pay attention. Don't let this meeting be like what we've had before. We have it and God being so good, you ever get into power, we don't get to meet again. We pray that you set up a committee of a sort that will be standing, that would continuously update you on the issues of the poor. Because this is where the majority of the young people in and around this place, I mean, end their keep. So we pray that, I mean, it's also the place that Ghana Revenue Authority, Customs Division, earns the bulk of their income. And it's also the place where, where things are not being handled properly, it affects the economy directly. The nation is in this state because everything that happens at the port has been left to its feet. Thank you. I rest my case. Thank you, Nana Fredua. Ship Owners and Agents Association. Is your rep here? 
Okay. He can't come. Why? <laughs> Enterprise Based Union. MPS Terminal 3. Are you here? Yeah, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Akumba, right? Yeah. Please come and then uh, lay your. Uh, that is um, Enterprise Based Union. Yeah. Uh, MPS Terminal 3. Workers, Workers Union. Yeah, let it come down. Like Sit down. I think it's okay. Yeah. Okay. May I this afternoon skip the existing protocols for the sake of time and be very brief. I use this opportunity to welcome Mr. President and then your entourage. As the moderator rightly introduced, my name is Roxin Akumba. I am a northerner by tribe from the Bolgatanga East constituency. This year, I contested for three elections. I went home for the branch chairman's position. After the branch chairman's position, I went for the ward chairman's position. My people at home did not understand what I was doing. They said, why would a union chairman in the port of Tema MPS come to contest for positions like this? Mr. Chairman, it, it, Mr. President, sorry, it does not end there. This year I am going to be a pooling agent. I am going to be a pooling agent. And Mr. President, this should tell you how serious we have taken the matter. We are not going to take chances. Having introduced myself, Mr. President, at the tail end of the exit of your last tenure as president in 2015, you gave birth to a nice baby. But regrettably and unfortunately, Ghanaians did not give you the opportunity to nurse this baby. That baby is Meridian Port Service, Terminal 3. We will thank you very much, Mr. President, and we are hoping and praying and working seriously that you come back because you are our original father. You will understand our plight more than our adopted fathers. <laughs> Mr. President, I have listened to my colleagues here. They have all talked about everything in the port but nobody mentioned of the port worker. I am here to voice out the concerns of the port workers. Mr. President, when you take the port and liken it to a human body, the port is like the heart of the nation. We receive and then we pump it out to every sector of the economy and of the nation. At some point in time, doctors were given special incentive when importing a car. I don't know whether it still exists. Mr. President, we stand here on behalf of the port workers to plead with you that when you come, at least let us have a special package for the average port worker. It is done in many institutions. Those who work in banks have the opportunity to take loans in the bank at a reasonable interest rate. Nothing stops the nation from doing this for the port worker who sleeps in the port day and night in order to serve this nation. Mr. President, we are here also to raise the issue of overburdened tax on us. When you take the port enclave, an average port worker will attest to this. The salaries are not matching to international standards, but the charges are international. <laughs> Mr. President, 
we plead again that something should be done about our tax. Most of us rely on overtime because of the salaries that are being low. And this overtime has also been taxed. And so there is no escape route for the port worker. We plead on this platform, Mr. President, and we know and believe that something will be done when you come back to power. Because you are, as I said, the original father of MPS, irrespective of what everybody will say. Once again, we welcome you and we thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. A round of applause for Mr. Akumba. Private Port Operators Association of Ghana, are you here? We should skip you. Thank you. We now call on Centre for International Maritime Affairs, Ghana. Are you also here to make... You are okay. Then we call on the National Fisheries Association of Ghana. Let's give him a round of applause. Yes, come down. Okay, thank you. Uh, Excellency, I will also stand on the existing protocols. Um, NAFAG is the umbrella body for... Basically, we are the only fishermen here. Everybody is in the port. We are, we are the only people who go to the sea. So we see more of the blue. Uh, Mr. Jokas, I know you are one of us. Don't worry. <laughs> um, NAFA comprises five associations. The yes, Alice, my name is Rich Tani Amamafu. I'm the vice president of the National Fisheries Association of Ghana. Uh, we comprise five associations. Ghana Inland Fisheries Association. So the whole of the lake area and everywhere you find water and fishermen, uh, I'm their vice president. Everywhere in Ghana. And then we have the canoes, National Canoe Fishermen Council. So from the western region to the Volta region, all the canoe are part of our association. Then we have the Inland Inshore Fisheries Association, the mini boats, the in inboard motors, they are also part of our association. Then we have the Ghana Industrial Trawlers Association, where Mr. Steve Ajokache is the president. They are also part of the association. And then we have the Almighty Ghana Tuna Association, where I used to be the secretary. We are, so we have five major associations. Uh, yes, Excellency, because we are on the sea, our problems are many. Uh, only last week, not this week, I paid a license fee of 10 million Ghana cities for my five vessels. 10 million Ghana cities. I would have paid 355 thousand Ghana cities. I paid 10 million and over Ghana cities just this week. By 2019, we were paying $35 per the GLT. That's the ton of the vessel. Now we pay $135 per GLT. So if my vessel used to be 1,000 tons and I was paying $35,000, now I'm paying $135,000 for the same vessel. So, we used to sell our tuna a ton for about $4,000. The tuna merchants are here. 4,000 Ghana cities. Now we sell for 22,000 Ghana cities. Yes, because the cost of operation keeps skyrocketing. So, the higher we pay, we have to pass it on to the consumer. These are matters we have even gone to the Jubilee House to discuss. We, we are yet to have resource. Everywhere in the world, when you import ship stores, our spare parts, because they are consumed on the vessel, they are duty free. Today we pay between 25 and 35 percent duties on our ship stores. It's actually killing our industry. Our fuel costs, on the sea, we pay rotas. <laughs> On the sea, we pay road tax. It's, it's serious. And we, we, it's worrying. Your Excellency, for the tuna setter, we used to have, we have two types of tuna fishing. We have pear sinners 
and pull and line. So for instance, pull and line, who can line? So for instance, my company has two pull and line. We don't use them. We have 20 pull and line in Ghana. Today, only six of them are active because we cannot operate them. They are too expensive to be operated. So, most, so you can imagine how many people are losing their jobs. The tuna set alone used to contribute close to $400 million annually. We now contribute less than $250 million annually to their GDP. The SLNC, the trust sector is struggling. And now only 40 of them are active. Because they pay basically everything we pay, uh, the tuna sector pays. But we are bigger in the industry, so they are struggling. And people are saying, oh, they are Chinese fronting. Because the Ghanaians cannot run the sector. The Ghanaians do not have the ability to run the sector. And so we have to rely on foreigners. The inland sector, Mamaga is here. Uh, the lake region, they have a lot of challenges. Their premise fuel had been taken over by a cartel. So they don't have access to their premise. They, they, they are struggling. The, the issue of child labor had to be looked at again because if you live in a community that is about three or four miles apart with just one school and the children cannot walk to school, their fathers will use them in their fishing industry. If you bring education close to them, I'm sure the issue of child labor along the lake area would be reduced drastically. Your Excellency, we are fishermen. The fish only exist in water. So if you permit Galamse in our water bodies, we will lose our inland contribution to our fishery. That's why today we are importing about 60% of our fish consumption. Because our inland contribution is gone, and they do not only pollute the inland water bodies, they also move through the coastal area, pollute our lagoons, destroy all of them. So in Greater Accra, you don't have any lagoon that is active now. And then they get into our ocean and destroy our estuary. So we also lose our fisheries and our clams and shellfish. It's serious. We need to look at it. It's not only affecting those who are in the inland. It's also affecting us. And the plastic waste is killing our fisheries. Your Excellency, the premise generally has been taken over by party apparatchiks. And it's worrying that a fisherman who wants to go to fishing would have to go and buy premise from a party person who is selling at double or triple the price when the taxpayer had basically subsidized, uh, subs subsidized all of the premise. So please, we need to look at that again. Ghana has no research vessel. We've not had research vessels since the last research vessel, Kakadi Amba, was sunk in 1999. So we rely on the Norwegians who occasionally scan through our water and give us some reports. So we fish without any research or scientific information. And we've had a number of promises about we will get to a research vessel, but there's never been a research vessel. When a vessel commits an offense, it pays a fine of a minimum of $1 million. Yes, that is the fine we pay in the fishing industry. A minimum of $1 million. So if I can, if a troll vessel is acquired for $800,000 and I commit an offense and I have to pay $1 million, I would have to abandon my vessel. We need to look at the fine regime for the sector again. Your Excellency, uh, the last time I was with uh, Ambassador Kwesi Ahoy and others to go and see the Anmabu Fishes College as part of our work as the Agri Policy and Business Committee of the lab. And I can assure you that work is moving at extremely slow pace. There's basically no interest in ensuring that we get that Mabu Fisheries College. But you see, we have 100% of our tuna captains coming from Korea. The average age is 65 years. 
Today I'm telling my people to retire all the 60 years, but I couldn't tell them to retire the captains. Because when they go, we don't have any more captains. We don't train crew. Our regional maritime university no longer train fishermen. It's only recently we have some arrangement and they are giving some of our crew some training. Some of them are still there at reduced cost. Because if a fisherman goes to RMU to train, you will pay no less than 4,500 Ghana cities. And they can't pay. And even if they pay, they won't work for us because we can't pay them the competitive rates they may get from the rigs and others. We probably need to have the regional maritime university working for us and the Anuabu Fisheries College on stream to train fishermen in gear development and mending. Your Excellency, in winding up, which is my last point, um, I have heard people say, oh, we need laws. We need you to promulgate new laws. We need new allies. Who does that? Is the members of parliament. So one of the things you need to carry along is to ensure that your members of parliament who are in parliament today are protected. There are, they are protected because if they are not there, you cannot do your work. Particularly the member of parliament for Tema East. If you don't protect him, I can assure you it will not be well. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give him another round of applause. Um, since we began this program, we've now heard the voice of a lady. And the women in the industry, you cannot just sit and then watch the men do all the talking. On that note, we invite Winifred Ananga, Secretary to GIFF, give ladies to also come and then uh, have a word with His Excellency. Let's give her a round of applause. Oh, remember, Mumbo Muzamano. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, our incoming president and, and his interaj, I welcome you this afternoon. What I would like to say right now is our president and all gathered here, they have spoken. And then what they have said, I know that as a listening leader, you have taken note of them and you will work accordingly. I stand here on behalf of Give Ladies to tell you that I can assure you that if we should see those things that we have mentioned here in your manifesto, I promise you that we will, have, we will give you all our all. Everything that you, you have assurance from the pots and its environment that we will give it to you hands down. Thank you. You see, they've said it very simple and it carries everything. On that note, uh, I call on Mr. Kwesi Bentil Wilson to also come and then give us the last uh, response, um, submissions. And then uh, let me acknowledge uh, Honorable K. 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 B. Where is he? Honorable K. B. Your Excellency, he's also here. He's feeling it. Ayezu. Mr. President, Mr. President, my name is K.B. Wilson. You don't know me, but I followed you for many years. I remember 2008 when you were coming to Takradi to meet the students at Tipoli, Sekendi Isikado, NDC members. Though I'm not a member of NDC and I don't belong to any party, I actually provided a kit for all the NDC members, Iskado and Sekendi. 
there are two things I will say. One, yes, I followed you. I get disappointed and I get elated when you talk. But I have a heroine here. A heroine I've always wanted to meet and see Ante Valerie Saki. Doctor. Sawyer. Ante Valerie Sawyer. I've also followed you for quite a long time and I'm glad I met you. Oh, I've seen you today. Mr. President, this morning I was having a chat with my schoolmates and we all agreed that Ghana has been set to fail. And it is true. We don't seem to get anything done well. In my travels, I worked on the continent. Some of the brilliant minds are Ghanaians. We cut across every sector. Why can't we get Ghana right? Nobody understands. Right. We talked about law. Is it somewhere last year I met some executives of GIFT? I met executives from Ghana Shippers Council and I decided to go to court to seek interpretation of three days. We can't work with that law, so we need interpretation. Unfortunately, our judiciary is compromised. We need assurance from you that they will have their independence, number one. Without it, we cannot move the nation. Without the law, you built T3, and then I can show you, I keep on saying, T3 alone can change the face of Ghana. We don't need the gold, we don't need the oil, we don't need the bauxite, we don't need the manganese. Like Singapore, T3 alone can change the face of Ghana, but with the appropriate laws. Mr. President, we sit here, we work here, all the laws at the port are infringed by people around the government. So we need the law to work. Everybody is under the law. We are all not above the law. Parliamentarians are not above the law. Businessmen are not above the law. Members of the government are not above the law. If we get T3 right, we will just look at Jata and encourage him to dare America. What is $3 billion? This port can give us more than the $3 billion we are crying to IMF or World Bank for it. We don't need it. T3 alone can give us that money every quarter. But we have to make sure we all do not flout. We all pay the duties, we all pay the taxes. We can do this by eliminating human interface. If you can eliminate human interface in the payment of duties and taxes. And I do remember during your time, you wanted to introduce CTN. The same association fought against it. Mr. President, you need to let the law work. If we get the law to work, we can change Ghana. Because come January 2025, Mr. President, you are walking into a trap. You are walking into a trap. You need money. How do you do it? T3. We look at setting up import substitute goods industries at T3 immediately when you assume power because you need the money to mobilize the people to work within the port sector so the benchmark raise that are given to everybody should rather be geared towards import substitute materials and the industry set up within 
the port area for exports. The more we produce, the more we are able to balance our trade. But please, Mr. President, we can only do that if you look at the rate of exchange and bring stability to the economy. Mr. President, thank you. Let's give him another round of applause. In fact, I've had requests from a lot of industry players, but um, time is far spent. Uh, it is time for His Excellency, the flag bearer of the NDC, the next president for the Republic of Ghana, come January 2025. His Excellency John Dramani Mahama will now respond to some of your uh, responses. Thank you. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Kindly sit. Kindly sit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, let me express my sincerest appreciation to you for giving us your time. I know you are all extremely business, uh, busy people, and that this few hours you spent with me here, you have lost some few thousands of CDs. And so I appreciate the time you spent here, and may God replenish it and that this interaction we have had here would be financially beneficial to you and that, and that you will be happy because if you are happy I will also be happy um, we've discussed so many things I can't touch on all of them but what I get from um, the representative of the Steve Dawes is that we should do some stakeholder consultation and it should be geared towards making our port competitive because this is all about competition we are not the only ports on the Atlantic coast uh, west coast of Africa we are in competition with Abidjan we are in competition with uh, Lome we are in competition with Kotonou we are in competition with Apapa and so we must be as competitive as possible so that our port will be the first port of choice and indeed that is why that investment was made to build this new port because I used to fly from Kotoka airport and any time I was going to the east the plane will turn over the ocean and start heading eastwards and I used to see this long line of ships waiting to enter the old harbor and I asked Ray at the time, I said, what is happening? Why is there such a queue? He says, oh, apart from the MPS berth that is working efficiently in the port, the other berths are old and all that. And so once ships must come in 10 by 10. And I said, so then let's get a new port where we can expand the volumes. And that was the thinking that went into the MPS partnership. Government could not do it alone. We didn't have the kind of muscle to borrow the money and do it. And so we told Gapoha, I said, look, you and your, part, you and, uh, your MPS have a partnership in the MPS bet in the old, old port. Can you raise the financing and invest in a new port for us? Which is what has happened. Phase two is yet to be developed. It means that if phase two is developed, it's going to be even bigger volumes. And so we must make sure that we are as efficient as possible, even with the operation of phase one, so that when phase two comes, we'll be the leading port in the whole of the West African uh, uh, sub-region. And so I want to thank you very much. I've noted all the issues that you have talked about. You spoke about the Customs Act 43, which reserves, you know, uh, downstream uh, clearing and forwarding to indigenous companies. You say it's not being respected. And so we, we will look at that. I've noted that. Um, you talked about efficiency and lower charges, uh, abolishing taxes on transit trade. We are becoming a higher cost uh, transit destination than our neighbors. 
and so they will prefer to go through Lome or Abidjan than to come through us. So how do we improve uh, our attractiveness so that transit trade can continue to come through uh, Tema or Takrade? And so I've taken uh, note, of, note of that. Um, we also talked about um, fair assessment of import taxes and duties. And then everybody seemed to be mentioning shipping line charges. And I think that you intimidated the shipping line, so they didn't come. Because I also wanted to hear their point of view, but unfortunately they are not here. But it's something everybody mentions. Give, everybody has mentioned it. Yesterday also, the Abosu Okai Spare Parts uh, traders, they also mentioned it. And the suggestion was that we decouple the release of documents from the shipping lines so that we can uh, regulate that area better. We have taken note of that. And that the administrative charges should be on the bill of lading. It should not be disaggregated per container because you don't process every container individually. And, so, and then um, Association of Clearinghouse Agency says we need an ally to regulate the uh, freight forward din sector. We have the Customs Act and so we need an ally below that to specify exactly what should be uh, there. Uh, my brother Asaki, uh, importers and exporters said you must join and pay, pay your dues as quickly as possible. You are an importer. Yes. And they complained of too many state agencies doing nothing at the port, just uh, levying, uh, taking monies. And, and so let's get a list of them. Let's see what they are doing. And those who don't need to be at the port should go and sit in their ministries and do their work from there. Um, I'll leave the issue of divining to Ray. Um, I don't, I'm not an expert in that area. The divining and the reefer station and all that, I'll leave it to Ray to, to comment on it after I have finished. Uh, the Regional Maritime University, I will go bit, I agree with you perfectly. Philippines is making so much money from their seafarers. They're just training so many of them. They don't have the ships. But any ship you take, Japanese ships, Korean ships, any ship you take, the seafarers are Filipinos. And they remit their money back home. Philippines makes almost $30 billion a year from their seafarers, from their nurse, nurses, their caregivers, and all that kind of thing. And so it's something that we need to look at and tap into. Let's train the seafarers, let's certify them to international standard, and let's also export them to go and work in other uh, places. Um, he talked about the Steve Dor, Steve Dor uh, 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 agents. There's not enough work. We've licensed too many, and so everybody's share of the cake has become so small that it's not uh, uh, very profitable. Uh, indigenization of freight forwarding, he also mentioned it. Then looking at the, ta the whole tariff system again, we need to rationalize the whole structure again. I was looking at the, uh, uh, the paper Ashmo was showing, the one he used to clear his, his containers. And um, we counted the charges. And for that, for, for that container alone, there were 19 different charges. And even I saw one for cars. And for the car, they are up to 22 different charges. We need to rationalize them so that um, we encourage both imports and exports, grow the volumes, and uh, improve our economy. And so we'll look at that. Um, Nana Fredua, yeah, the management of RMU, for what I hear, the rector was suspended, who was a Ghanaian. I don't know for what reasons he was suspended. And so the current rector is acting. Uh, for how many years? Three and a half years, acting. Okay. Okay. That they say the rector was an NDC man. 
and so he was suspended. <laughs> okay, we've taken note. We've taken note of it. We've taken note of it. Um, he also asked for a review of the Shippers Authority Law in order to give the regulator more teeth to be able to enforce regulations in the port. And I agree with you. We should be able to give the Shippers Authority enough powers to be able to rectify the things that are going wrong in the port. And so we'll look at that. Um, MPS terminal workers that their, work, their salaries should reflect international rates just as the levies and duties reflect international rates. Uh, we've taken note of that. Um, I just want to say that with regards to Asaki exports, I announced that we'll create an accelerated export development program and the president will personally chair that program and stakeholders like all of you are going to be on it and we're going to look at the things that will make it easier for our exporters to export their products so that it encourages more exports because we need to balance our trade uh, between imports and exports if more exports go out it will bring more dollars that will balance out the dollars we have to send out for our imports um, we're thinking of developing a transit terminal for the landlocked countries on our northern border so that we can transport their containers directly to that terminal and then it makes it easier for them to take their containers from there instead of bringing their trucks and hauling the containers all the way and if um, we have the resources it will be good to build a rail line to service that terminal so that as soon as their containers come we just put it on the rail trail and it takes it to the destination then I've come up with um, an idea to help importers we're going to license some finance companies uh, 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 non-banking financial sector players and if your container is coming and you know you don't have money to clear it immediately you go you sign an agreement with them they'll give you a short-term facility one month two months three months and when your container comes they'll pay for it and they'll move it to a special uh, location and uh, so government would have received its money GPHA uh, freight forwarders would all have been paid and then the owner of the container will now uh, work with that company and take his container and take his things. Government will regulate the interest and so the interest will be specified so that they don't become loan checks and aside from that we will also regulate the fees that they will charge for pre-financing the clearance of the goods. Um, NAFAG had a whole thesis and I'll be happy if you can give me a paper on all the things you discussed. Some of them we have uh, talked about already because when we went to your members, the Inland Canoe Fishermen and all of them, they complained about diversion of premix. When Atam Mills was there, he created what they called the Landing Beach Committees. It was non-partisan. And the fishermen were the members of those committees. They had their chairman, their secretaries and everything. And the premix was sent directly to them and they distributed it. We allowed them to put a small markup and they used that markup for developing the fishing community. Unfortunately when this government came, they have virtually destroyed the landing beach committees. The premiers go to their party chairman and others and then they sell it at whatever price they want to the farmers. When we come we we'll re-engineer it all and put the landing beach committees back in place. Um, plastic waste, water pollution, no research vehicle, uh, high offense uh, fines and penalties I noted all that uh, down. And then Mr. Wilson who spoke finally spoke about the need for an independent judiciary. I more than anybody support you about an independent judiciary because we all uh, know what has been uh, happening and that the executive has been influencing uh, the judiciary unduly. When I was in office I never once called the Chief Justice or any judge to tell them what 
judgment to give in any case. I never did it. And I know Professor Mills never called any judge to say what the verdict should be. Uh, in this case, you hear rumors about, you know, uh, some people uh, telling the judges, you know, what kind of judgment to give. We should leave our judiciary to be independent, to use their own uh, wisdom to determine cases, because that would improve investor confidence in our, uh, uh, in our country. If investors know that if they have a legal uh, tussle, a Ghanaian can call a judge and judgment will be given against him, nobody would want to come and invest in our country. And so I agree with you. And he says we should let the law work. When we have sat with you, we have done the ally you are asking for, we've done the shippers' authorities' law and strengthened it, given it teeth. I beg you, if it starts biting you people, don't come running to me and say, <laughs> and say uh, shippers' authority has caught you for something and this and that and that. Let's strengthen the law, let's all abide by it. And I'm sure that if we do that, we'll all have a prosperous port and a prosperous